So the year is about 1975. Um, all airlines at this point have some form of central light reservation system, but still the travel agents have to make phone calls in to, um, to, um, to an airline. They can make all reservations uh, with that airline. They don't have to call every city. Um, but still, it's kind of tiresome for the travel agents and a number of the bigger travel agents. They want to have their own computer system. Specifically, they want a computer system where their agents can book on all airlines. So they form a committee to do that and they go to the airlines and say, you know, if you won't give us a reservation system that we can use in our offices and book on all of you, we will make one ourselves. And then the airlines say, well, we will help you <laughs> because you don't want uh, somebody else to own the system that provides access to your services. So the airlines in the United States, they go together and they form a committee to produce something called JICRS. Um, and that, that means Joint Industry Computerized Reservation System. And the idea was that this was going to be a system that was shared by all the airlines. Now, the way they were going to pay for it was that the airlines would each pay and they would pay according to their market share. And the biggest market share was United Airlines. They had um, about a third of the market at that point. And, um, well, um, if you know anything about standards and forming industry standards, you know that the bigger the market share you have, the less interested you are in creating a common industry standard. Because what you want is for everybody to use your system. So anyway, this committee was formed. It were representatives from the travel agents. There were representatives from the uh, various airlines. Um, and Max Hopper became the representative for American Airlines. And he really did a really good job on the committee. So he got, got very nice relations to other airlines and also to uh, the travel agents. And then in 1976, um, in January 1976, to be specific, United Airlines make an announcement where they say, we are going to withdraw from um, the, the JICRS system, and instead we are going to take our system, and their reservation system was called Apollo. Um, and... Um, we are going to make our system available to travel agents um, at a very cheap price or even free um, so they can book with United, but also with other airlines who want to sell their tickets through Apollo. And they made the announcement in January and they said they would start to install the first terminals in travel agents in September. And <laughs> that is probably the least smart announcement ever made in the travel industry um, because American Airlines, Max Hopper, had kind of understood that United was about to pull out. And naturally, the other airlines and, uh, and the travel agents were quite angry with United because they didn't want to have separate systems. When United pulled out, the biggest airline pulled out. So Bob Crandall and uh, Max Hopper went to the biggest travel agents and they said, Instead of waiting for Apollo for six months, we can give you Sabre right away. Um, so what they did was they went ahead and they gave Sabre terminals to um, the biggest travel agents in the biggest cities. And uh, when Apollo came to roll out, they found that Sabre was already there, installed. And also they found that once you have one travel system, you learn that system, and it's actually quite difficult to use. I'll, I'll, I'll give some examples. And uh, so you don't want a second system because you, then you have to train your staff in using two different systems. You want to have everything in one system. So eventually it ended up that in the United States, American Airlines had about a 40% market share. 
and Apollo had about a 30% market share and the rest was shared by um, some other smaller reservation systems. Okay, so American Airlines had the biggest market share in sales in the whole industry. Okay, now why is that a competitive advantage? Because it was a tremendous competitive advantage. Well, um, in order to understand that, you have to understand, again, and you can notice a pattern here, you have to understand how the system is used, you have to understand sort of the operational details and why it is um, so important. So you have to imagine that you are a travel agent um, and you're using Sabre. Um, and, um, okay. So, Sabre, that is American Airlines, um, AA, um, has 40% market share. Um, United Airlines um, with Apollo has 30% market share. The rest is shared by other reservation systems. Now, having a big market share in the user interface system, the system through which the customers come in, in the, in the start, only travel agents. 40% of all travel agents in the United States were using American Airlines system. Now, why is that a competitive advantage? Well, it is a tremendous competitive advantage, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to give you some reasons. First of all, the, the first reason, there are actually four reasons why it's a competitive advantage. And the first one is very, very simple. It's called fee. And a fee is something you pay for a service. So if United was selling a ticket through Sabre, they had to pay a commission to Sabre. They had to pay something to Sabre because Sabre was selling the ticket. Okay, vice versa. If Americans sold a ticket through Apollo, United Airlines system, they would also have to pay a fee. But since American Airlines has a bigger market share, they get more money in than they pay out. So the bigger your market share, the more money comes in. Okay, so that's a, a very simple competitive advantage. Okay. The second one is rather subtle and becomes more and more important over time, and that's data. Now, American Airlines had had a reservation system, their own reservation system for a long time, and they had stored a lot of data. So they understood, you know, how many people tend to fly at certain times and so on and so forth. Now they started to sell uh, tickets for other airlines. Then they got very good insight into the traffic patterns for those other airlines as well. So they got very good information about travel throughout the whole United States. In fact, not all airlines had their own reservation systems. And they certainly didn't have reservation systems that were selling tickets on other airlines. So um, for American, you know, they, they knew um, the traffic patterns. Other airlines had to do things such as, you know, post an employee at an American Airlines flight and count the number of passengers going onto the plane. Whereas American Airlines had very, very good data for the whole industry. It's very, very important. The third one, and this one was actually so big that it became the subject of a congressional hearing in the early 90s very, very big competitive advantage. And that is something called a screen bias. And in order to understand how important that is, you have to understand um, how um, these systems looked like, what they looked like and how they worked. So these were not, you know, the nice systems that you use today on the internet to book yourself a, a ticket. You were basically looking at text displays, um, so-called green screens. And a green screen is a black computer screen with green letters coming up. And you have to understand that the communication was very, very slow. The communication tended to be 75, 300. And what that means is that the speed of sending something to the server um, was uh, 75 bits per second. Baud or bits per second. 
I'm not talking, you know, kilobits or megabits or gigabits. We're used to talking about gigabits um, speed now when we're, you know, connecting to the internet. No, we're talking bits, just bits. And it was 75 going up and 300 coming down. So you sent a message basically to the server. The screen, the system looked very, very primitive. You know, you had a, a prompt here and you could write some text. So you wrote this very long, complicated sort of command, you know, where I'm going to fly to, where I'm going to fly from, uh, how many people it is, uh, whether it's non-smoking or smoking, you know, what kind of fare it is, you know, is it business or whatever. It wasn't called business in those days, but whatever, you know, so on and so forth. Very long, complex commands that you had to be trained, highly trained to understand. And then you hit return and the system would write out um, a table with headings like this. And then the, the server would uh, start looking for available flights and then it would start listing the flights. And they were coming down from the server at 300 bits per second. And 300 bits per second is so slow that you can read the text as it appears on, online. So here comes the first flight, like this. You know, text, like this. Then the second flight comes along like this. This is taking time, right? Then the third flight is coming along like this. And you have to imagine, you know, uh, the travel agent has a customer on the telephone and they're sitting there talking in the telephone, you know, the customer is online, you're sitting there waiting for the results to come back. Each screen would list 24 lines of flights. Now, are you going to wait until the whole screen is full? before you're going to say, you know, it looks like there's a flight available here and there. No, you're not, because the customer is waiting and phone calls are expensive. So, um, you know, what you found is that 85% of all flights were booked on the first three lines. Now think about that for a second. First of all, um, who controls which flights are listed first? Well, it's whoever owns the system, right? So American Airlines owned the system and they made sure that their flights were listed high. Of course, United did the same on Apollo and the other small reservation systems did the same on theirs. But American Airlines had the biggest market share, so it had the biggest impact. And secondly, start thinking, do you know another company where it is very, very important to be first, listed first, and where people are willing to pay for that? Well, Google, right? So what I'm trying to say here is that the competitive impact of owning the user interface is the same today as it was back then. And now you, I hope you're beginning to see why American Airlines is such an important story, because Everything we're doing now, competing on the user interface to get high up in social media, to get high up in Google or Baidu or whatever our search engine is, well, it all happened in the 70s and early 80s in the computerized reservation world. Okay, so that was the third, um, the third um, part of Americans' competitive advantage. And then the last one, um, was something, there was actually quite a bit of research here. And when the researchers saw that, yes, you had advantages of fee and data, and you also had the screen bias, so people booked more. But they also saw that, you know, uh, the people who had Saber, the American system, American system, um, they tended to book more on American, even if the flights weren't listed that high, simply because they were used to using American. And that was often referred to as the halo effect. And, um, you know, a halo is something that holy people, you know, sort of a ring over your head. And uh, um, that, um, that effect came into view here. So basically, American Airlines, because they had access to this, um, this system, um, were able to make 
quite a bit more money um, uh, than the others. And if you look at the traffic patterns um, for American Airlines, you will see here you have you know uh, the revenues of American Airlines, and what you have here is the uh, the American Airlines is the black and yellow line here. And as you see throughout the 80s, they start off as being number three and they grow and they become number one in the industry uh, towards the end of the 90s. This was partially because they had Sabre and they were able to preferentially list their, uh, their flights. But it was also due to something else um, because in 1980, the whole industry had another shock which changed competition, not just in the US airline industry, but in the whole international airline industry. And American Airlines was able to take advantage of it. But that's a subject for another video.